Good day, statisticians. Today we are going to continue our study of the combinations of random variables. And let's begin with a motivating example so we can really get into the content of today's lesson. Just imagine that uh, you know I gave you some facts here um, about apples and bananas. Um, and, uh, and based on these facts, let's consider this question. Suppose you just randomly select an apple and a banana. Some random, some random apple, <laughs> some random banana bee, right? And um, what's the probability the banana will weigh more than the apple? I don't know. Uh, how can I figure that out? Well, here we've got some facts about apples and bananas. Here we're told, let's just believe this is true, you know, that, uh, that apples have weights, say, that are normally distributed with a mean of 180 grams and a standard deviation of 25, and bananas have a weight of 145 grams on average with um, a standard deviation of 18 grams. All right, so I, I'm wondering, you know, what will be the probability, what will be the probability that a randomly selected banana will be greater than an apple? Well, if I had to guess, I'm guessing that it probably would be not that likely, less than 50%, because, uh, well, on average, bananas are smaller than apples. So the chance that I get a banana, like maybe an extra big banana, and then like maybe an extra small apple so that the banana is bigger than that apple, well, it doesn't seem super high to me, right? So how could I figure that out, though? How could I answer this question? Well, right now, just having an inequality between two variables is strange. That's not something we know how to deal with. However, I could manipulate this. For instance, if I just took, um, uh, like, an, uh, uh, think about uh, algebra one. If I wrote B, right, is greater than A, couldn't I subtract A from both sides? If I subtract A from both sides, right, subtract A, subtract A, then I could rewrite this as B, right, minus A is greater than the number zero. Ah, now this starts to become something that we can deal with because I can think about the distribution of the difference of two random variables, right? So this question ultimately will change into the probability that we'll get some B minus A being greater than zero, right? And so this is what I want to answer. Now to answer this, I need to understand the characteristics of the distribution of B minus A. Now how will I figure that out? Um, well, first of all, since I see both the distributions of the weights of apples and bananas are normally distributed, then the, the distribution of B minus A is also going to be normally distributed. Now, there's, I don't have a proof for that for you for today. Just believe me that the, the sum or the difference of independent normally distributed random variables will also be normally distributed. So that's great. I know the, the, the distribution shape is normally distributed, but now I still need two other parameters. Remember, for all normal distributions, we need to understand the mean, right? And we also need to understand its standard deviation. So how can I figure out those parameters? Well, that's just the same thing as, say, expected values, at least for the mean. So let's start by thinking about the expected value. What would be the expected value of B minus A? Well, that would, okay. Well, what would you expect to be the difference between just some randomly selected apple and some randomly selected banana? Since, well, apples are 180 grams and bananas are 145, I'd expect that the banana to be smaller than the apple, and on average, probably by whatever the difference is between these things. Our intuition would probably say, well, I could just figure out what the expected value of banana is and subtract from that the expected value of apple, and that should tell me your answer. And um, so as it works out, maybe 145 minus 180, which would seem to be um, a negative 35 grams. And uh, yeah, guess what? That's correct. Your intuition about the expected value of the difference between two random variables is correct, right? So in general, as a formula, if you have two ran independent random variables, X and Y, the expected value of their difference is the difference of their expected values. So that's great. We've got our one parameter, at least. We have negative 35 for our mean. Now, a little bit trickier here will be our standard deviation. And we know that if you want to get the standard deviation of a random variable, that we should get that standard deviation by first finding the variance, right? So, okay, um, I really need to, uh, to figure out that standard deviation. I need to first find out the variance of, say, B minus A, and then I'll take the square root of that and get my, my um, standard deviation. Well, your intuition might tell you, well, since I'm finding the the variance of the difference between two random variables, I should just, well, subtract the separate variances. Just like we learned in another lesson that uh, the sum of two random variables, you mean sum the variances. Maybe I'll, 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 since I'm subtracting here, I'll just subtract those two variances. And um, if you were to do that, what would happen, theoretically? Guess what? That's wrong. 
your intuition is wrong. But think about why. Well, if you had did the variance of B minus the variance of A, the variance of B would be say 18 squared, right? The variance of A would be 25 squared. And uh, so then you'd subtract them and what would you get? Well, a, a negative number. Does it make sense to have a negative variance? No, it doesn't. Because a, var a variance as a measure of spread measures how spread out your numbers are. Numbers can never be uh, have a measure of spread that's negative, right? The, sh the smallest possible spread between numbers is zero because they're not spread out at all. That would be like the spread of a constant. Like the number three is constantly three and the spread of the constant number three is zero, right? Um, you can't have... Uh, any sp a, a negative spread. So maybe you're, you're like, oh, well, maybe I'll just ignore the negative and take the absolute value. No, no, none of that works at all. In fact, as it works out, that if you have two independent random variables, the, the, uh, um, the variance of their difference is still the sum of their variances. Now, why is that? I'll, at the very end of this, I'll give you a reason to believe it. But this, accept this formula for now, right? Believe, just trust me, right? So instead of... Um, subtracting right instead of subtracting the variances i will still once again add them i'll do 18 squared plus 25 squared that will be my variance and let me go to my handy dandy little calculator here i'll do 18 squared plus 25 squared and i got 949 949 you can see it right there and so then all i'll do is take the square root of 949 the square root of the variance is the standard deviation and i get a standard deviation of 30 point say 805 or so um, actually 806 if we rounded correctly so 30.806 now boom i can calculate the probability that b minus a is greater than zero simply by using this distribution right here i know that the distribution of a randomly selected banana minus a randomly selected apple is normally distributed with a mean of negative 35 and a standard deviation of 30.806. I can just go into my calculator, normal CDF, because that's, I got a good old TI calculator, and I'll plug in, um, sorry, I'm not showing this on screen. I'm just going to go from negative 35 to infinity, um, then uh, with a mean of negative, uh, excuse me, I'm going to go from zero to infinity, right? Because I want to know uh, the uh, probability that the difference is greater than zero. So excuse me, I'll go from zero to infinity with the mean of negative 35 and a standard deviation of 30.806. And voila, you can look at the calculator there and you can see we have a probability of about 12.79% or so. And Shazam, that's our answer. Um, based on these facts, the probability that you pick a banana at random that ends up being bigger than a randomly selected apple of whatever this variety is, Shazam, 12.79%. Is that cool? All right. So yay. The real question is, why should I believe, really all of this calculation, of course we know how to work with normal distributions and all kinds of stuff, but all of this really comes down to you believing and buying into this formula, that the variance of X minus Y is really still the sum of the individual variances. Why should I believe that? Um, I will... Uh, prove it to you in just another short video in one moment. All right. Thank you. Have a beautiful day.